telling all the leaders falsehood about King David. However, there were two who knew the truth. There were two who knew the truth. David knew the truth. God also knew the truth. David knew that what was being said about him was without any truth. That's why in, se in Psalm 17, 1, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goes not out, that comes not out of unfeigned lips. God knows who we are. David declares in our text here, and, and also in Psalm 17, 1, he declares that he's right. The word simply means righteous. David is declaring that in all his ways, all in his actions, all in his attitudes, he has behaved righteously. He also declared that his prayer goeth not out of vain lips. The word vain speaks of a fraud. It speaks of deceit. David was not, as we would say, putting on a show, and he wasn't. He was not trying to deceive God in prayer by saying he was right. He's not deceiving God here. He prays with all honesty and sincerity. Lord, I don't believe I've done nothing wrong. Go ahead. Is he trying to make sure his relationship with God is correct? Yes. Other are correct. correct. Right. Yep. He's examining himself. Yeah. See, see, David knew that it would be impossible to deceive God. And uh, do, do we actually think we can deceive God? See, you might, we might as well be honest in our prayer, right? We might as well be honest about it because we definitely cannot deceive Him. He knows our hearts. He knows what we say. He, he knows. He sees everything. David knew that God saw everything he had done and everything that he was. He knew he could not pull any wool over the eyes of an all-seeing God. Because God knows who we are. He really does. Now, we cannot deceive God, but is it possible to deceive man? Oh, yeah. Sure. Notice what David said in verse 3 in our text. Thou hast proved my heart. He's proved his heart. Thou hast tried me, shall find nothing. What, God, what does God see when he looks into our heart and our life this morning? God, David said, look at my heart, Lord. You're going to see it's honest. You're going to see it's right. What does he see in our hearts this morning? That's a, that's a challenge, isn't it? That is a challenge. Does he see nothing? Does he see sins that are cherished or tolerated or ignored, right? Remember, God sees our heart. I, I, I love what David says here in our text because he's actually saying to God, look at it, right? Right? And you're going to see him all right. And, he, and that's, that's uh, how he does it. Now, D.L. Moody used to say this, <clears throat> that if a photographer came along who could photograph people's hearts, he would starve to death before he would get a customer. <laughs> Boy, that's so true. That's so true. How foolish we are to think that God does not know everything about us. He knows who we are. How deceived we are to think that God does not see who we are. He is a God who sees who we are. So we we'll always remember that. Amen. He, he, he sees who we are. The question is, do we believe that? Amen.
Do we? Do you? Do you really believe that? I'm I'm I'm, I'm amazed at this the, how honest he was in the psalm. Could I say this morning, Lord, you know, test my heart. Look at it. <laughs> do I dare to do that? Uh, what would he find? Because he knows who we are. Notice verse 3. He says, you have tested my heart. You have what? Visited me in the night. Not only does God know who we are, God sees where we are at all times, too. I was just reading that verse before you said that. When my version says, and examined me at night. Is that something that David is allowing God to do? Yes. In his prayer? He's, a, he's inviting God to do it. Yep. Yep. What's interesting, he said, visit me in the night. Night in the Bible is often indicative for dark, difficult times. It was, it was indeed a dark time in David's life right now. King Saul is after his hide. He wants him dead. However, God knew what David was going through, and he knew where he was in his life. God knows where we are. God knows where we are in our livelihood, where we live, but also He knows where we are spiritually. Amen? Spiritually. There are many lost people who have no spirituality whatsoever. They can't because they're lost. They don't have the Spirit of God in them. So, the Bible says here that in His dark hour, God had visited David. That's interesting. You know what? Every time God blesses us and visits us, it should be a good experience. Amen? Yeah. It should be a wonderful relationship, a great experience for us. I often think of, think of Adam and Eve, what it must have been like for God to visit them every day in the Garden of Eden. Wow. Perfect harmony, no sin. Every day they fellowshiped with God, spoke to God. Wow! What was that, you know? We'll, we'll, we'll experience that one day when God says the world is going to be destroyed and God's going to create a new one where there's no sin. Okay, Revelation tells us. All right? In other words, he's not going to destroy the world. He's going to destroy the contents and create a new creation with no sin anymore. Just think what that's going to be like. Think of the fellowship that Adam and Eve had. Must have been wonderful. God visiting them every day until sin entered and they were banished from it. Enoch, too, with God. Enoch walked with God and was no more, the Bible says. Up he went. Well, that must have been something. David realized that it was a blessing for God to visit him in his darkest hours. In his most troubling times, he thanked God for his visit. He visits us in the night of quiet restfulness, in the night of darkness and sorrow. God knows when to visit us. He also knows what to bring. God can comfort us. God knows exactly what to do for us in our times of trouble. Charles Spurgeon, the great English pastor, preacher, commented on Psalm 17, verse 3, in his commentary, and he spoke and he said, quote, he spoke of the omniscient eye and the omniscient visitor. Blessed be his name that he is the omniscient visitor. He is always there when we need him the most. As the old song says, standing somewhere in the shadows, we'll find Jesus. In our night, he will be there for us. He will visit us. And it's true. 